Good evening and welcome to our continued focus on NDTV 24-7 of the World Economic Forum here in Davos, Switzerland. The big story that we've been tracking today is the India story, whether it's a case of a glass half empty or a glass half full. Remember, in 2018, Prime Minister Modi was over here. There were dozens of Indian CEOs. The economy was growing at 7.2% GDP. But this time around, that GDP growth number has come down. And a lot of people believe that the buzz around India, which was present in the past, is absent this time around. But that really depends on who you ask. Uh, we spoke spoken to global leaders uh, who have said that India's 4.8% growth is a matter of concern. But we've also spoken to Indian industrialists who insist that no, the India story is not over by any means. India does face economic concerns, but over a period of time, many of these structural issues will be resolved and the big buzz over India will resume. That's our big focus today at the World Economic Forum in Davos on a day in which Piyush Goyal, the only senior minister of the government of India, was present where he took some pretty hard-hitting questions uh, from a, a couple of people in the audience who asked him on the Citizenship Amendment Act. Siemens has been in India for a long time. You focus a great deal on clean energy. Um, how is India a priority market for you? Well, I mean, India... Whenever I visit India, which is quite often because I'm on the board of Siemens Limited India, I typically also try to meet Prime Minister Modi. And every time he sees me, he says, well, you should actually sit on our side of the table because you're an Indian company, which I obviously appreciate a lot and makes me very proud. So India for us is very, very important. Uh, it's a, it's a 1.3 billion people market, very vibrant, very innovative, very get something done, don't talk so much thing. So I like what we see. On the other hand, of course, we really need to work together with the government to improve the infrastructural mm. development. It is about energy efficiency, you know, more, more renewable energy uh, uh, versus coal. It's more about... Uh, moving people and goods efficiently, you know, mobility infrastructure is very relevant, and implementing the fourth generation of manufacturing, which is pretty cool because in India we have so much software yeah. capability, so we, if you bring the hardware and the software together, it's a perfect match. So very, very interesting market, very committed to it. So I really like what I see, but again, we need to go together and push the infrastructural development, yeah. the efficiency, uh, quicker, higher. Sure. Uh, just one more question. Uh, it's sort of related. The Indian economy, the IMF projecting its growth at 4.8%. Uh, the global growth has been impacted because of the India story. And then there are protests also which are taking place in India. Are you worried going forward? Well, I mean, uh, you know, there would be a lot of countries in the world who would die for having 4.8%. Now, obviously, I realize that uh, in a developing economy like uh, India, 4.8% are no good. I think the latest numbers are better. No, it's 4.8 according to the IMF as of day for the four year. yesterday. 2019-2020. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that one I know, but for the quarter, it seems that maybe we have been cutting the corner. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, less than 5% for a developing economy like India is no good. So I believe uh, the government is well advised to look at where would the stimulus be best invested in order to stabilize growth. Because it's about jobs, it's about developing further, and that's why I believe, uh, you know, bringing people into jobs is very relevant. The big focus of the World Economic Forum this year in Davos, Switzerland, has been about the environment, about sustainable development, about climate change. One of the companies in India which has been working very, very closely with that is Renew Power. Suman Sinha are with us. Uh, you are the largest um, renewable energy company in India at this stage. Um, it's a particularly significant WEF for you, right, given the fact that you have worked so hard at, at achieving what you have in the country. You know, I think that the whole uh, dialogue and conversation around climate change has been pretty, uh, I would say, uh, active for the last several years. I think this year, again, the World Economic Forum is trying to use their good offices or their bully pulpit, as it were, to try to take the conversation about climate change forward. They've got some pretty interesting people here. I mean, Greta Thunberg was here as yeah. well, as you know. And I think the whole purpose is to highlight to all the people assembled here that this is an important issue. And keep in mind one very important thing, that uh, there are lots of large corporates here, and I think they're the ones that have to really act um, significantly to, uh, to address this whole issue. 
I think countries, as much as you would like, and as much as the Paris Climate Accord promised a lot, unfortunately are not delivering what they need to. So I think civil society, large corporates, small corporates, all have to step up to really make this conversation, uh, turn this conversation into actual reality on the ground. I think that's really where the big delta now lies. You know, in terms of what you are doing um, in, in renewable energy, whether it's it's solar energy or uh, whether it's 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 windmills, um, how has that had a sizable impact on India's power generation? It's look, it's it's becoming sizable now. Today, renewable energy accounts for about 10 percent of India's total power generation, and that has happened in a very short period of time, literally in the next, last uh, five to seven years. Today, our company generates one percent of India's total electricity production. And through doing it through clean sources, we help mitigate half a percent of India's total carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. Now that's what our company is doing, right? So if you add up the whole sector, and if you look at the growth that is there in the sector in the near term going forward, I think renewable energy will play a very, very significant role in curbing India's carbon emissions and in meeting our, our carbon, our Paris uh, commitments on uh, reducing the carbon intensity of our GDP down by 30, 35 percent. And India has done well as far as our international mandates are, uh, statements are as far as renewable energy is concerned. So that's one positive that we have, isn't it? We are actually meeting our targets. No, look, I think this government has been very proactive. I think we could have taken the view that, look, this problem is not caused by us. Why should we have to be the ones finding the solution? We have our own development path to follow and we should not be curbed in any way. But I think this government five, six years ago when renewables are still more expensive than thermal, yeah. took a very, very positive decision of saying, look, we are going to do our bit. Why? Because India does have a vulnerable population. You know, we will be particularly hard hit due to climate change issues. And therefore, we have to do whatever we can to in fact, propel other nations also down the, the right path on climate uh, issues. Now, renewable energy has become so much cheaper because of technology improvements than any other form of energy. So going down the right path has become a lot easier now. And I think I must commend the Indian government for having taken this view several years ago. Yep. Um, if you look at the macro picture about India <coughs> and the state of the economy, 4.8% is what the IMF has now said. 90, and the bulk of the globe's growth has been affected adversely by India. Um, so, I mean, it's a question I've been asking others as well. Is the India story essentially bust at this stage? No, I think that's a very pessimistic reading of the situation. I think the, the reality is that through a series of policy missteps, global slowdown and various other matters, India's economic growth has fallen, as we all know, from 8%, 8.2% down yeah. over the last six quarters to 4.8%, 4.5%. I think, you know, my sense is that we are kind of close to the bottom now. I think the signs are that we, we will start now growing slowly. But I think there are some fundamental systemic issues that need to be dealt with by the government. I think the financial sector is still broken. And if that sector is not revived, we will not have fast, fast, uh, faster economic growth. So I think that is one sector that has to be addressed. I think on the tax front, the government has done stuff particularly on the corporate side, but there's still a lot that's been done vis-a-vis -vis capital markets, vis-a-vis -vis making investments easier, dividend distribution tax. So there's a lot of easing up that they can still do just on capital flows. Similarly, across every single sector, if you look at it, there are lots of things that need to be done. The government is doing them, it's, it's doing them slowly. It's, you know, in some sectors it's faster, some it's less fast. I think those are issues that all need to be addressed. I think if that happens, there's no reason why our growth should not pick up back up to seven to eight percent yeah. in the very near term. But but how? But by when? Because 2021, we're going to go above just a little above six percent, is what the IMF says. Yeah. Look, I I think the fact is is the with the global economic growth at about two and a half to three percent. You know, maybe six percent is not so bad. I agree with you that we're all used to eight percent. The Indian economy, the Indian population, given where our you know, rate of development is right now, or our level of development is, we need to grow as fast as we can. There is but no question. But, but, yeah. but let's look at the, the, the real story on the ground. This is NBFCs faltering. The infrastructure yeah. sector desperately needs money. Where is that money going to come from? Unemployment numbers, uh, some say they're exaggerated. Others say that they're, they're humongous at this stage. The auto sector in a definitive slowdown at this stage. We know as a fact that there are lacks of people who've lost their jobs. Uh, consumption is low. So each of these parameters is low at this stage. So right. given, given this scenario, uh, I mean, uh, why, why do you still feel optimistic? I'm not saying that I feel optimistic. You don't. What I'm saying I mean, is... I don't want to put words in your no, mouth, no, but, no, fair enough. but are, I, are I, you I, not optimistic? No, I, let me say this. I don't think the, that economic growth is going to slow down anymore from where we are. Growth is going to recover, but very slowly. 
as an Indian, I wish that it would recover faster. But for all the reasons that you mentioned, and I, I, I alluded to some of them as yeah. well, right? The reality is that growth will recover slowly. And that's obviously painful for me as an Indian. I yeah. would like growth yeah. to be faster. As a business person, I would like power demand to surge in line with yeah. growing uh, GDP growth as well. But I think we have to accept the fact that we are in a certain environment. And I think as long as we can start reversing the tide of our slowdown, I think let's, let's first achieve that. And then let's start focusing on growth going forward. Now, I, I think the government over the last three, four months certainly has tried to be more, react, more proactive about at least understanding what the issues are. The FM has done all her pre-budget meetings. The Prime Minister has done a lot of meetings with different parts of the industry. They've listened, they've heard. Hopefully the fact that there is a real problem out there is now well understood. And we can start now looking at the next step, which is trying to find solutions. And as I said, the solutions are not, there, there is no magic bullets. This is hard work that has to be done. For example, in our sector, you have to reform the distribution companies. You have to improve the efficiency of the distribution companies. You have to build out more generating capacity, right? You have to ensure the sanctity of contracts. Those are things that don't require any big, big, no. big overarching uh, reform process. It's just that the ministry has to do its job right. in a in a efficient, thorough, effective manner. Right. And the whole political, bureaucratic nexus has to do its job. Fundamentally, yeah. that's all that needs to happen. Yeah. And if it does happen in the right way across multiple sectors, and if you talk to my colleagues from industry from other sectors, every sector will have four or five sure. key issues that right. have to be addressed. Right. These are, again, no rocket science right. involved right. here. So a lot of the basic things need to be done first just, to, yeah, to, to yeah. fix exactly. a lot of the, the, the basic problems. Suman, good speaking to you. Thank you so much. Thank well, you. there you have it, Suman Sinha, somebody whose company has made a, a real, real uh, effort and has made uh, substantive gains as far as uh, as far as renewable power uh, in this uh, in this country in our country is concerned and that's very much the focus this year but also his views on what needs to be fixed urgently to get india's economic ship back on the right course there's always been a buzz at the world economic forum for several years, as far as India is concerned, does that buzz still remain? Are there concerns about the broader economy? Shobna Kamineni joins us. Thanks very much, Shobna, for speaking Hi. to us. It didn't start off very well for us, did it? 4.8% GDP growth is what the IMF projected. In, You know, I mean, is that a big concern for the international CEOs and others, you know, who have an interest in India that, look, you know, what's going to happen in the future? You know, the same day that Geeta Gopinath spoke about that, uh, actually, I attended a, a FTI dinner mm. and they released a res resilience report. Can you believe that the world average is 42 out of 100 and India is top of the table at 60 out of 100? Mm. So the world is seeing, and this is a survey of 2,500 of global CEOs mm. that actually say that, so maybe uh, while the world recognizes as recognizes us as a, uh, as a resilient country, we should make ourselves a resurgent one also. And is that a problem that this resurgence is is a problem? We have problems in the banking sector. We've got problems in the infrastructure sector. No one knows where the money is going to come from. Um, uh, the aviation sector has is, is right on the edge. The auto sector was in a meltdown for several months. So, what, I, I mean, what's the reality check over here? when you talk about a resurgence so let's not be narrow and say that there everything are many sectors. yeah yeah no no but let's not say it's only about the economy i'll give you something a statistic that i heard from the very top that out of all the N the 900 nbfcs the four in trouble hmm. you know so and, look, and massively look at the amounts of yeah, money but but the whole thing is you have to understand also that we're a country of not just uh, averages or of 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 single but we're a country of many mm. and we're a country of many states mm. so even the states that have come here to davos mm. i think some great states have come they're growing at way more than the 4.8 they're mm. growing at 7 8 percent and mm. and look at that that's why i see that there's great hope of karnataka growing at nine is what i was see? Uh, i was just told by yeah. the state so um what about the other big perception issue because um, I spoke to the global CEO of Siemens um, and I and, and one of the points he said is that look 4.8 percent for India is not good enough number one number two I asked others about the protests going on now these have been widely reported as well so is that something that international business leaders men and women are asking that what are these protests all about actually no one's asked me with this so but but you know maybe Perception is one, reality is another, and uh, many people here in the business field 
ask Siemens and are they going to pull out of India? For sure not. No, they're virtually an Indian company. Uh, exactly. So they will grow. And many of these are looking at growth. You know, here the bigger issues are uh, China and the US. Yes. Uh, Donald Trump bought, brought 400 people mm. in his delegation. So these are the issues being spoken. India is, in, India is a great alternative. So let's not, you know, think that we, we were the end of the earth with this. We are just, a, we're an important player yeah. and people will use us strategically as long as we behave rationally. Mm. That's important. Mm. And um, in terms of the India presence over here, now the number of CEOs uh, is more or less the same as it's been in the past. But is there a decline in the buzz over India? Again, the 400 Trump people, it should all be about America with that. No, we are uh, concerned about uh, us. I mean, we are insular you know, in our thinking. I, often, I but... actually felt this year, there was less of a Chinese presence. Hmm. I didn't see too much but of what China. what about our presence? I mean, how Our presence it, how has, has it always been, been if, you, if you see the street, the promenade, yeah. um, oh, lots of Indian companies. Hmm. And, and, and of course, the, the big Indian company, uh, the, the big world companies that are run by Indian CEOs. Mm. So India makes an impact. You look at every single panel, there was someone... Uh, of course, the conversations, I think, here are... Um, give it a break. This is, this is definitely a white-dominated, uh, you know, program so so there will be more emphasis on so India. nothing negative about India at all despite everything that we see statistically I mean you did, did talk about imagine? resilience it's yeah. it's all good it's all positive it's all happy maybe I met the right people <laughs> talk let's talk about your own uh, your own core uh, concerns healthcare yeah. um, you you are uh, what are some of the, the the key expectations that you have in the budget um, I think that this budget Really, one of the recommendations we made is, while the Aishman Bharat is amazing, uh, um, they've already achieved 25% coverage, of what they wanted, 100 million out of 500 million. But really, we have the opportunity now to be able to become a Thailand, or Korea, or Rwanda, and say that, let's insure everybody. I was with the IRDA chairman, and he said, I've made an uncomplicated, easy insurance. Mm. Let that be the base that is compulsory for everybody. Mm. I could never get over, you know, in India, why it's compulsory to, to insure your vehicle, but not mm. your person. Mm. And mm. I think that's the opportunity we have. That will be the second real unlock of what will happen in healthcare. That once you create access, affordability, there'll be uh, there, there'll be good things mm. that happen. Because basically, in, India needs to get healthier. Mm. We cannot afford to be spending what we what, what we could mm. potentially mm. spend because mm. of NCDs and mm. all on mm. you know mm. on healthcare. Let's try and keep ours as. Uh, a healthy India. To do that, we need to have access to healthcare. We need to get into healthy mm. behaviors. So I like some of the things that the Prime Minister has done in terms of, you know, healthy India, healthy mm. workforce. We mm. should do that. And right now, CII at 125, mm. I'm personally going to see that, that we uh, fight TB in the workplace. Mm. People don't understand, yeah. you know, yeah. there is, they think that that's a, that's a disease of old. And mm. actually, I'm seeing the statistics and 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 we have that's that's a big sure. one that uh, CIA is now going to combat. Yeah. Shobna, thank you very much uh, you, for speaking you, to us, thank sharing you. your views and, 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 you know, your sense that it's not negative necessarily, it's fairly positive over here and that the India story is resilient, it needs to be resurgent. I think that's the takeaway, yeah? Perfect. All right, with Chitish Gupta, thank Vishnu you. Shom for NDTV. Thank you. For years, several chief ministers have been coming to Davos as part of the India story, trying to promote business in their individual states. This year, it's no different. We're very happy to have with us Mr. B.S. Yadurappa, the chief minister of Karnataka. Thank you, sir, very much uh, for speaking to us. Overall, IMF has brought down India's growth to 4.8%. They say it'll be only till 2021 that we'll cross 6.2%. Uh, so... As you represent Karnataka, is that also a concern for you that the India story in Davos is not as strong as it once uh, as it once was? Sir, my home state Karnataka has a state GDP of 250 million dollars and is growing at over 9 percent. So, states such as Karnataka are here today at the World Economic Forum to meet with investors 
and industry to invite them to invest and grow their business in India. Uh, definitely, uh, so many important persons, they are going to come and invest uh, in Karnataka. And our financial condition is Karnataka is good. So you don't, you're not worried about the, the macro India picture affecting investment in your state? Sir, we have he heard the esteemed uh, panel, uh, panelists as they have taken, uh, talking about making India a $5 trillion mm -hmm. economy and goal laid out by our Prime Minister. It is important to highlight that all economic activities in India have been in its states. Mm -hmm. So the states of India will be driving force for achieving this core of $5 trillion economy. So definitely, uh, coming days will be good. You know very well the entire world is facing economic uh, uh, slowdown. Problems, yeah. So naturally that will affect Karna, India also. But our state is, uh, compared to any other state, uh, our situation is uh, yeah. quite good. As the Honorable CM said, uh, we are growing at 9.6 percent. We have grown. And our, much, our exports have grown at 7 percent in the last year, which is uh, both service and merchandise exports. Our unemployment rate, rate is just less than 1%. Mm. And uh, so there are slow, there is slowdown in some sectors like auto sector. Mm. But that is being made up by uh, ha faster growth in sectors like aerospace, mm. etc. And of course, uh, service uh, exports like software and uh, other health, etc. Is, is, is as good as it was earlier. Right. So therefore, Karnataka is a... It's a balanced economy, and it is not dependent on any one particular sector. And therefore, you, we are growing fast, yeah. and we hope to be the uh, grow fast and also lead the state country in terms of growth rate. Right. And sir, uh, one final question to you: In speaking to a lot of global CEOs and uh, even some Indian CEOs, they all ask this one question now. Why are these protests happening in India? How is that going to affect the economic climate in the country? Not what is all. your answer to that? Not at all. Because intentionally few people, they might have raised this uh, type of questions. In fact, an important Muslim leaders meeting asked the straight question, whether it will affect even a single uh, Muslim community leader. I told them that I am going to take responsibility if it affects any individual Muslims. Then not at all. These are all cock and bull stories they have created. It will not affect at all. Because the, our Congress friends, they don't have any other issues. That's why Rahul and others, they are trying to make it very big in this issue. It will not affect at all. Even in the global, uh, global meeting at mm, all, so that's what I was our asking. minister answered all the questions, their queries. Lulu group yesterday, Mr. Yusuf Ali. Yeah, and so when a global investor says India has been great, but what are these protests all are all about? What are the concerns? How would you answer them? No, I'm telling you now, there is no such question, uh, problem at all. Okay. Few people are raising this question because they don't have any other issues, hmm. particularly Congress friends. Hmm. So people are answering uh, them properly, and it will not affect uh, at all. Well, it's time now for us to take a short break. There's a lot more coming up. <laughs> 